Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta six released today to developers on all iOS 17 supported devices, iOS 17 beta six released later in the day and iOS 17 public beta four is now available too. Now this is out at the same time everywhere around the world and is available for all iOS 17 devices, such as the iPhone 10 R all the way up to the iPhone 14 pro max. Now, along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 17 beta six watch OS 10 beta six, along with with TV OS and HomePod OS 17 beta six. There was no Mac OS 14 beta six released just yet. Also earlier in the day, we had watch OS 9.6.1 released to everyone. We also had an Apple vision pro update and so far no others. Now this particular update was not huge at 744.8 megabytes, but it seems to fix an awful lot. So let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. We'll go to settings, then we'll go over to general, then about, and as you can see, the build number is 21A5312C. We're getting very close to a final release, maybe a couple betas left, and this particular update, like I said, fixes quite a few things. The first thing though, is we don't have a modem update. Coming from beta five to beta six, there is no modem update. So overall connectivity was actually pretty good for me on beta five, but I had a lot of issues with other things. So hopefully this fixes them. Now the first new feature has to do with the phone. Apple recently changed the phone call when you received a call to actually show the end button in the bottom, right? They've now moved that back. So if we place a phone call, now I placed a phone call to myself with the pixel fold. And as you can see, the end button is back in the middle. Most people will be really happy with this as before it was in the bottom, right? As you can see here with beta five and earlier betas. So they've moved it back to the bottom middle within settings. If we go down to display and brightness, the wallpaper has been updated to match iOS 17. Finally with beta five and earlier, it had previous wallpaper versions there. Now we have the latest wallpaper that matched the iOS 17 release under settings. If we scroll down to messages under iMessage apps, they now have a toggle to enable or disable them. So before we could just delete them. Now we can just turn them off altogether. If we don't want them to show up in messages, if you have a car connected to your device, I have a Tesla connected right now. If we go under settings and Bluetooth, maybe this was there before, but I have haven't seen this before where we have a little key showing that it's a key to the car via Bluetooth. So that's something I'm noticing new. Let me know if you've seen this before though. If we go into shortcuts within shortcuts, we can now toggle a cellular plan on and off and it works properly. So if we tap the first one, you'll see my cellular plan disappeared here in the upper right. And then if we tap the second one, it will re enable it. So we'll give it just a moment here and it re enables and you're actually seeing it carry over to my iPad asking me to turn on Wi-Fi calling. So it's turning off here and then sort of triggering that across the overall devices that I have as well. Now, if you're within Europe, you may see Apple pay cash show up in your Apple wallet app. However, I've been seeing this from a couple countries and they're not able to enable it. We've been talking about it on the telegram channel that I have and you'll see it could not add card. So it doesn't seem to work properly, but maybe Apple's bringing that to to different countries soon. So far people are actually seeing it in Hungary and Germany. So this is actually showing up that way. So hopefully it actually enables for everyone later on. There's also quite a few splash screens as well. If we go into photos, you'll see the first one where it says what's new in photos, albums in the photos widget, pets album, pinch to crop and more customizable memories. Additionally, if we go into the health app, people are seeing that as well. So if we go over to health, you should see one that pops up that says improve health and activity. Additionally, some people are seeing one. If we go into the free form app where it actually gives them a splash screen as well, where it says what's new in free form, improve drawing, follow along with others, faster diagramming and much more. So those seem to be the new splash screens in beta six. Now, if we go over to the feedback app and go into iOS and iPad OS 17 beta six release notes, Apple has been working very hard to get things working properly. We have tons of different resolved issues this time around. Before we had 77 categories of known issues. Now we're down to just 10 categories of known issues in beta six resolved issues are now up from 17 categories to 79 categories of known issues. That's just categories, not specific known or resolved issues. So if we scroll down, you'll see as we go down, accessibility says resolved issues, voiceover might not speak predictive text in some fields that should be resolved this time around. They've fixed issues with airdrop. And of course this is all listed alphabetically, but as we move further down, they've fixed issues with CarPlay, 
FaceTime where it said a black rectangle is shown behind the reaction picker while it is being animated. After animation completes, the picker has black corners. That's been fixed. So lots and lots of things have been resolved. And if you're still having issues, make sure it's not listed here as a known issue before reporting it. If you're still not finding it, make sure you report it in the feedback app. Now, as far as bug fixes, I've heard from some people, there's a few things that have been fixed. The phone definitely seems to be less hot when using the camera in cinematic mode. And also cinematic mode was actually not showing different content properly. The exposure seemed off. This is thanks to my friend Fresco or Artemis Prime that provided the wallpaper today. So he said that's been resolved. It was heating up the phone as well. It seems to be much better. The overall stability of the phone so far, just today and using it for an hour or two, seems to be better. It seems to be smoother, less crashing, and just in general better overall. As far as bugs though, that notification bug is still there. So that's probably not a priority for them. Obviously it's been there since iOS 16. They wanna get the OS working properly this time around, but it should be much better this time around. And we'll of course test that and check it out on the weekend and see if it's still performing well in a few days. As far as the overall performance, it seems to be nice and smooth. There's a few little small things here where you see the widgets change, but if we go into maybe the app library and scroll, ProMotion is nice and fast, but of course I've only used it for a few days, so we'll have to see what it's like and see if it still performs well and is stable over the next few days. As far as going into apps like music, everything seems to be loading quickly. Of course, it's dependent on your internet connection as well, but in general, going into places like Safari, the connectivity seems to be nice and fast. I've had no issues with it loading. Everything seems much better so far in using it in the last hour or so. So much, much better this time around. As far as the heat of the device, well, it's still a little bit warm, but nowhere near what it was even earlier today. For some reason, iOS 17 beta five, my phone was always warm. The battery would drain incredibly fast. It seems much better. And I I've just installed the beta and I'm just sharing it with you. So far it seems to be better, but again, this will take a few days to measure just like battery will. And if we go into settings and then go to battery, my battery health is down to 89%. It was at 90 just yesterday after installing the beta, it probably recalculated it, but it was draining so much. I was charging it twice a day with beta five. So if we go back to the last 10 days, You'll see yesterday, I only had two hours and 46 minutes of screen on time, an hour and 48 minutes of screen off time, and used over 100% of my battery as I had to charge again. Today is a little bit better at two hours and 14 minutes, but we'll have to give it a few days and see if it improves. Hopefully it does. It hasn't dropped too fast in recording this video. So hopefully it's much better in a day or so. We'll have to wait and see. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta six, at this point, it seems to be much better than beta five. I recommended many people not install that update if they weren't on the betas already. But if you're wanting to try out iOS 17 and you haven't already, I would opt for iOS 17 public beta four. That way they're typically more stable and they release after we know the stability is there. However, at this point, I think it's probably safe to try out, but make sure you have a backup and you know what you're getting into as it's been quite buggy all along. In fact, beta five was buggier than previous betas. So hopefully again, this fixes it based off that feedback as well. If you're wondering as far as when iOS 17 beta seven will be out, that will probably be next week. Typically, as we get closer to a final release, we'll have weekly updates. Then we'll have a release candidate and a final release based off of the Apple event that we're thinking will be on the 12th. Most likely we'll see a final release on the 18th to the public. So I would expect iOS 17 somewhere around the 18th with the iPhone 14 or iPhone 15 rather launching on the 22nd. So that's what makes the most sense. We also could see iOS 16.6.1 as soon as tomorrow, as we had a short update for watchOS 9.6.1 as well well, but we could see that soon. As far as benchmarks, I did run those and they seem to be a little bit better. Let's take a look with iOS 17 beta five on the left and beta six on the right. We have much improved multi-core scores. So single core is actually down a little bit. We have 2,613 for single core compared to 2,648. With multi-core though, we've bumped that up to 6,350 compared to 5,768. So it's a significant bump up Beta five wasn't very great as far as that went. I actually ran it twice before and I couldn't get it to go up above 6,000. So this is much, much better this time around. So that's everything with iOS 17 beta six. Of course, if I find other features, I'll be sure to let you know this weekend in the follow-up video where we'll talk about new features, the overall performance, battery life, and much more. So be sure to check back for that. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.